Coming up on IC Sports Central. Homecoming football rocks the dome as Carpoli comes to Pocatello. It was a barn burner that went down to the wire. We'll show you how the Bengals roared at the right time. IC Sock has a tough season, but also won some thrillers. We'll take you to double overtime against Northern Colorado. And volleyball puts up a winning record at home, but struggles on the road. Still, they finish strong in the big sky. We've got an action-packed show. Stay tuned for ISU Sports Central, up next. Good evening, ISU, and welcome to ISU Sports Central. I'm Keegan Sullivan. This is Stephen Knight. We've got a big season of four sports to talk about. Steve, so far, all systems go for ISU. That's right, Keegan. Volleyball off to a strong start and ISU soccer rolling and going. But let's start with football. At Holt Arena, the fans all decked out in orange and black. This was a new year for ISU football. This team just would not quit and it showed on homecoming. The Bengals would rally from behind and a great win against Cal Poly. The Bengals received the ball to start off the game, and the offense went right to work. First quarter, Tanner Geller looking for his brother Mitch, and he is open for business. A 70-yard touchdown, the Bengals would jump out to a 10-0 lead, but the Cal Poly wasn't about to make it easy for the Bengals. Quarterback looking to take the lead. He would find a seam on the right side, and touchdown Cal Poly. Bengals would go into halftime tied 17-17. Third quarter wasn't sunshine and roses for the Bengals as Cal Poly would find the end zone for two straight touchdowns. Bengals would trail 31-17. Next drive, Giller finds Michael Dean open and it's a walk-in touchdown. Bengals cut the lead to 31-24. Defense getting it done, they hold Cal Poly to only a field goal. Now fourth quarter, offense with something to prove. Down by seven, Geller drops back throws to Dean for a 30-yard touchdown to pull the Bengals within three. Six minutes left, James Madison. A two-yard run for the go-ahead touchdown. Bengals up 38-34. to The ISU offense would show their dedication and grip by outscoring Cal Poly 21-3 over the final 17 minutes of the game to earn the win in front of a crowd of 7,100 fans. Idaho State comes back 38-34 on homecoming. Another huge highlight this football season came early on, on the road in Nevada. This was supposed to be the money game. Get paid, take a beating from a higher division school, and get on with the season. But ISU had a nasty surprise for the FBS Nevada Wolfpack in Reno, third game of the season. First half, Tanner Giller looks left, finds Hagen Graves for the touchdown, Set up by an interception, Bengals go up 10 to nothing. James Masson takes off looking for a hole on the left side, but met with a wave of defenders. Still Bengals feeling the rhythm. Geller drops back, a strike to Dean in stride, and he is off for a major gain on third down. Dean with 133 receiving yards, and look at that vicious neck tackle, ouch. I see running backs getting it done up front, Stop just short of the goal line. But the next play, Ty Flanagan up the, and over the pile. Bengals building a 30-7 lead. Late in the fourth, Nevada trying to tie. Quarterback looking, throws over the middle. Short pass for the touchdown makes it 30-28. But the Bengal defense stops the two-point conversion. Bengals also receives the onside kick attempt. And there is no joy in Nevadaville. ISU upsets a Mountain West opponent 30 to 28. Huge win at Nevada. New head coach Rob Fennessy and his Bengals are feeling the mojo. They rolled into Northern Colorado feeling good and it showed this might have been the game of the season with a normal high flying Bengals air game taking a backseat to a massive ground attack. First quarter, ISU driving. Tanner Geller throws to Mitch Geller, and he is gone. 47-yard touchdown. Bengals go up 7-3 early, but a trail at the half 20-17. Now jump to the third quarter. 
Bears quarterback Jacob Nip with a huge throw and catch, splits the seam off to the end zone, a 60-yard touchdown. Bears go up 26-17. Next, Bengal drive, looking to respond. Geller hands off to Nehemiah McFarlane, finds the end zone for the touchdown. Bengals down just two. Ten minutes left in the third. Bears quarterback looking downfield, finds his open man. Bears would score back-to-back -to -back touchdowns, extend their lead to 40-24, to but the Bengals wouldn't quit. End of the third quarter. McFarlane finds a big hole, 30 yards, and finally dragged down. Bengals push their way to another touchdown to close the lead to 40-30. to Fourth quarter. Bengals trailing 36-40. Tanner Geller throws. Mitch Geller in the back of the end zone. Touchdown. Bengals take the lead 42-40. to All right, six seconds left in the game. Bears with a short field goal attempt. And it is good for the win. The Bengals fight all the way back just to see their lead evaporate at the buzzer. A heartbreaker, but still a great game. Final score, Bears 43, Bengals 42. Good stuff with the Bengals playing well on the road, but then there's the rest of the big sky. The Montana Grizzlies came to Holt Arena for a mid-season tilt. Could the Bengals take down another giant? Idaho State fans showed up in white ready to see their Bengals put on a show, and a show it was with the white home uniforms and the blackout rocking in Holt Arena. Early in the first, ISU driving, wide out or wide open, we'll let you decide. Tanner Geller finds James Madison, a 22-yard Bengal touchdown. They jump out to a 7-0 lead at home. Montana comes back with two quick scores. Freshman quarterback Gresh Jemson pounds his way over the goal line, 13-7 Grizzlies. Bengals special team blocks the extra point. Montana up by six. Cheerleaders getting the fans going and they're loving it. Very next, ISU drive. Tanner Geller finds his brother Mitch. Now you see him, now you don't. A 70 yard touchdown. ISU back on top, 14-13 early in the second. All right, six minutes later, Tanner Geller throws to Mitch Geller, gets one foot just inside the end line, puts ISU up. 21 to 13, just a spectacular throw and catch by the Geller brothers. The Grizzlies open the third quarter with a short touchdown pass to cut our lead down 21 to 19. ISU Ty Flanagan powers in from four yards out, Bengals back up 28 19. Montana goes on a scoring binge, puts up 20 straight points. Montana will extend their lead 39 to 31. And a little love for our defense, check out this play. Quarterback sack, but it wasn't enough in the end. Bengals lose by eight. Still a strong showing at home against an always tough Montana team. Montana 39, ISU 31. After a couple of tough losses to Montana and Sac State, the Bengals return to Holt Arena just before Halloween to face the struggling 0-6 Portland State Vikings. Would they give the Bengals an October scare? Not likely. Bengals entering with the blackout uniforms. Launch out of the tunnel, ready for this one. Early in the first quarter, ISU up three to two. Ty Flanagan drives into the end zone. Bengals up 10 to two. Second quarter now, 10 to nine. Flanagan escapes, darts away, and gets hauled down just shy of the goal line, frustrated. But next play, Flanagan finds the end zone, touchdown. Bengals lead 17 to nine. All right, Portland State. Offense get into work with a big play of the day. Portland State running back finds a hole and he can outrun the Bengal defenders. 77 yards to the house, touchdown. Bengals cut the lead, or Bengals lead cut to 17 to 16. All right, check out this next play by quarterback Tanner Geller. He will scramble out and he is looking, finds Hagen Graves for the touchdown. Bengals go up 24-16. Now watch this in our own end zone. Tanner Geller finds his brother Mitch Geller for an impressive one-handed catch. He can't be stopped. Touchdown. Bengals go up 31-16. Mitch Geller, a career high of 195 yards receiving on four receptions. 
Jump to the third quarter. Vikings down, deep pass for the touchdown. Bengals still in front, 45-23. All right, fourth quarter, IAC Ty Flanagan pushed his way for another touchdown. So roll credits, cue fight song, Bengals get it done at home. Tanner Giller completed 14 on 23 attempts, three touchdowns. Final score, Bengals 59, Vikings 30. Really, overall, a fine season for ISU football under first-year head coach Rob Fennessy. The Bengals finished 4-7 but won some big games and were competitive every week. Now let's shift gears and take a look at what else is going on this fall. ISU soccer launched another big sky campaign under veteran head coach Allison Gibson, but things were tough this year. The team started with three wins but then lost eight straight before getting some traction mid-season. It all came together finally at home against Northern Colorado. Bears come into Pocatello with a robust 7-3 record on the season, but about to become 7-4. Leadership from the captain, goaltender, Shauna Hennings facing a penalty kick. Dives hard to her left, off the post. Freshman defender Lauren McGay shuts down the rebound, saves a sure goal. Another penalty. Hennings goes hard to her right and again makes the save, keeping Aishu in it. Aishu opening goal, Catherine Leachman across the top of the box. Jasmine Lopez with the header to McKenna Bambi just inside the far post. Aishu goes tic-tac-toe and up 1-0. Tied in the second overtime, Lopez down the right side of the box, shoots, gets her own rebound, floats it just under the crossbar for the walk-off winner, Aishu with the golden goal. Aishu with a big Sky Conference win, 2-1 at home over a southern strong Northern Colorado team. Idaho State gets a 1-1 one -one in Big Sky Conference play and 2-8 and overall. Northern Colorado dropped to 7-4 and 1-1 and one and one in Big Sky play. A sweet overtime win and next a chance to face arch rival Montana also at Davis Field. Could the Bengals ride at the momentum from Northern Colorado? This one was a defensive battle. We'll show you the only goal and it went for the good guys. 22nd minutes. First half, give and go to McKenna Bambi, a hard shot, finds the upper corner, beautiful. Let's look at, at that again. A scramble up top, Bambi back and forth with quarter cross, sets up a left-footed ripper, top shelf where mama hides the cookies. Spectacular stuff. Always great to beat Montana. Bengals get to celebrate the win in front of a home crowd. A couple of big wins helping support a season that was tough overall. Winding down the schedule, the hated University of Idaho shows up at Davis Field and the Bengals bring a power game against a still fighting hard Bengal team. First half, Idaho in white, Brew, a little tap dance and fires on goal just over the crossbar, maybe tipped by the goalie. Aishu now with the corner kick into the middle of the box and off the post leads to a mad scramble, a couple of chances, finally Idaho in with the clear good pressure. Idaho again on the attack, Aishu back on its heels a bit, nice ball control to the right side, but a nice diving save by Hogarth. Breaking up the play, Aishu gets the clear. Big play late in the first. Maybe a little luck involved with this one. Check it out. Aishu possesses down low. Pass to McGay. Fires a long shot towards the goal. And it's perfect. Floats it just over the goalie. Aishu goes up 1-0. Second half now. Brick Kodokos. Fighting hard. Sneaky pass to Sherman. Has some room. Takes the shot. But it gets shut down, it trickles in on goal, game tied 1-1. Scary moment in the second, look at the collision on the back line. Two players go down, take another look. Just a very scary, aggressive tackle by the ISU defender. Both players go down, fortunately everyone is okay. But, sets up a free kick that would decide the game. Ado launches a rocket to the upper corner and that was the game winner. Aishu would lose 2-1 to rival Idaho, a great battle in mid-season. Aishu came in the, in the last weeks of their schedule with 5 wins and 12 losses and facing a strong Eastern Washington team at home at Davis Field. Bengals fall behind early as Eastern Washington scored 2 quick goals in the first 7 minutes. A windy day at Davis Field, Bengals trying to find control of the ball, a bit of a ping pong battle at midfield with the headers, but things just never seeming to find the right way. Set play in the first half, Eagles leading 3-1 now. Maybe a little frustration. Look at this aggressive slide by the Bengal defender. Not on my watch, he says. Everyone would be okay. 
but take another look at that. Scrappy defense, Bengals not giving up any ground, making the Eagles earn it. More Eagles in the second. This is a big play from midfield because getting the ball is Easton's Chloe Williams. She broke the Big Sky scoring record with this one. Gets her second goal, becomes the all-time scoring leader in the Big Sky women's soccer. A nice, nice long shot past the keeper. Congrats, Chloe Williams. Final score, Eagles win 4-2 over ISU. Afterwards, head coach Allison Gibson was proud of her team's effort. Easton dominated everyone this year. Gibson said no one has been able to score against Eastern Washington, and for us to get two, I thought was tremendous. Lady Bengals finished two and seven this year overall in the Big Sky play. Clearly a rebuilding year for a team that's used to making a deep run in the postseason. Finally, let's check on the Lady Bengals volleyball team. Kayleen Kuhn is on the big board with a look at how their season went. Thanks guys, ISU Volleyball with a solid season this year. The highlight of the volleyball season saw the Lady Bengals going on a five match win streak in Big Sky play. After knocking off Southern Utah, Montana and Montana State at home, they rode a three match winning streak into Eastern Washington and they kept their mojo running. First set, Bengals up 11 to eight. Chloe Hurst with the power serve and it's too much to return. Start of the second, Eagles go for a spike ISU with the block and the first set point to, this, point to ISU in the second. Later in the second, ISU with a good save on the sideline. Haley Keck for the set to Garrity and who slams it off of two defenders. Third set, a long rally here. Eagles are showing signs of life and the ball goes back and forth. Finally, a nice set for ISU and the big spike. Eastern Washington would take set three. On to the fourth, Bengals in front. Tough action at the net, a couple of good saves and a monster spike. That's how it went for the rest of the match. ISU wins in four games. Lady Bengals winning a four straight four straight in the big sky. They'd follow that with another win against Weber. Definitely their best run of the season. After a loss on the road at NAU, the Bengals came back to home base for a match with Sac State. ISU trailing early in the first, Hurst to London for the setup and Pearson slams it in for the ISU point. But the Lady Bengals drop the first two sets and Hurst into the net on the set point in the second. Bengals down two to zero. Oh. Third set, Bengals up by six to four, and another big slam from Hurst. Set point in the third, big block from the Bengals, wins the ladies the third set. Fourth game, good work around the net, and a hard spike just overpowers the sack defender. Very similar play on the set point in the fourth. ISU tees up and slams it home for the winner. Ties the match at two. We go into the fifth set, Sac State with an unforced error into the net. Bengals hanging tough, but on match point, it's the Bengals who misfire. The ball drifts out of play, and Sac State would take a tight match, three to two. A great battle for the Lady Bengals. Ashley Van Avery added a career high, seven kills, to go with 38 assists. Abby Garrity also finished with 17 kills, 10 digs, and her ninth double-double of the season. Later in the season, the Lady Bengals going on a three-game win streak, smashing both Northern Colorado and U of I with three nothing, and coming close with Weber three to two. They head over to Cedar City to face off against a tough opponent, Southern Utah. First set, Patton sets to Hurst, punches it at ISU, and the ball goes flying into the sands. Set point in the first, London sets it up. Hurst goes in for the kill. ISU wins the first set. Second set, Bengals serve, and watch this. SUU tries to take out a ref, almost knocks the official into the net. Set point in the second, Hurst sends the ball out of bounds, and SUU ties the match one to one. Set three, watch this, Keck to London. Thompson for the point, ISU's first point in the game. Later in the third, Garrity pounds it through the SUU defenders and a strong point for the Bengals. Set point, ISU drives it through the blockers and the set point goes to ISU. Bengals up two to one. Match tied at two. Now in the fifth set, 
Bengals down 14 to six. Hurst serves and the ball goes out of play. The SUU Thunderbirds joyous. They come back to beat the Bengals three to two in five sets. Still another strong effort. Abby Garrity gets 15 kills and 13 digs for her eighth double-double of the season. Haley Keck a match high 24 digs and setter Michaela London with 48 assists. The Lady Bengals hitting a rough patch on the road. They suffered a road loss to North Dakota and then headed a little further south to face off Northern Colorado in Greeley. Opening point, a great dig by Haley Keck sets up with a big spike, a point for ISU. Set point in the first ISU and the serve goes way long and out. ISU takes the first set. Bengals up 16 to nine in the second. Keck to the front of the net and a hammer spike point to ISU. Set point in the second. The big spike goes through the blockers. ISU rolling, winning the first two sets. Third set, Bears leading ISU fighting back. Another big shot goes off two UNC defenders out of bounds. UNC hanging tough, a big spike and finish for the Bears keeps the ISU in the hole. But we move to match point, a hard shot gets blocked, but the call goes to ISU and the Bengals win in three straight, 25 to 22 in the third and final set for a big road win. Chloe Hurst added 12 kills and eight digs. Sophomore Haley Keck finished with a game high 14 digs, while senior setter Michaela London added team high 32 assists. Back to you guys. Thanks, Kayleen. Thanks for watching the inaugural edition of ISU Sports Central. We love and appreciate you. Go, Go Bengals! Bengals.